term is this? It's a monomial. One term. 54x to the 0 power. That's a monomial. And I broke it up into two terms. I'm expanding it into its factors. Remember factor times factor equals product? Remember that back in... Okay, you're breaking it up into its factors. So, grammar school. Then you went to junior high school and you got in pre-algebra. And they said factor x squared. And you said x squared is equal to what? x times x. And you just factored it. And everything was hunky-dory. And then you got to Algebra 1, and they said, factor out a what? Common term or common something. And you used the division and used your multiplication tables and said, what's in common with 2x and 4? Two. So you broke it up into 2 times x plus 2. And then you got to algebra 2, and you got to trinomials, and then everything fell apart. Right? Yeah. And they told you to use this method and this method. All of them are basically the reverse FOIL method. Now, in order to do the reverse FOIL method, you have to be very good at the what? FOIL method. And that's multiplication. Because the opposite of division is multiplication. So let's go back. Let's take a minute. And let's go over the FOIL method. First, okay, if you're from around here, it's outer, okay? If you're not from around here, it's outside. <laughs> if you're from around here, it's inner. inner. If you're not from around here, it's inside. And... So, and this is for the FOIL method is used with two multiplying two what? Binomials. Multiplying two binomials. Now, if you multiply a binomial times a trinomial, you have to go back to the grandfather rule of distributive law and just work your rear end off because it's just distribute the first term, you distribute the second term, and then combine like terms. So x plus 2 times x minus 3. Okay, first, x times x is x squared. 3x, well, I'm going to get to that in just a second. Can I be in charge for a while? 2x, I'm just kidding. That comes from full metal jacket. And 6. Okay. I love movies. That is my thing. I do. I can watch movies all night long. Um, my direct bill is like out the roof because I get movies all the time. I'd rather watch movies than football or basketball or baseball. I'm not that much of a caveman. But college football, I do like college football. But I'd rather watch a movie. But anyway, full metal jacket. I don't know how I got on that. But anyway. Oh, yeah. There's drill instructor. Can I be in charge for a while? That's one of my favorite scenes out of that movie. All right, so what's missing? The signs. Now, I do this on purpose because you've got to, when you're doing the reverse FOIL, you've got to remember the FOIL method and how you get those signs. Okay? So, these two guys right here, 
what are they going to do? Combine. They're going to combine. Okay, remember that. C-O-M-B-I-N-E. And we've got outside is a negative 3x. And inside is a positive. And how do you get the sign? How do you get this 6 right here? What did we do? We multiplied these two numbers, and that's a positive and a negative, which makes a negative. negative. Now remember that when we do it over the reverse FOIF. And your final answer is x squared plus, sorry, minus x minus 6. All right, now that's the FOIL method. Now, in factoring, you're given this. And you have to reverse it to get this. And the biggest problem is this right here people have a problem with. And that's the signs. So you have to concentrate on the signs. And i got an easy way to do it. So let's take a look at the reverse FOIL method. The first thing you're going to do, I'm going to write it down first. First thing you're going to do is draw two sets of parentheses. And everybody can do that. The second thing you're going to do, break up first term starting with 1. Now the reason you have to start with 1 is because there are some teachers that will put some weird trinomials on a test and they will say use the reverse full FOIL or or factor it or whatever, and you'll just sit there and you'll use 6 times 9 all day long, and the answer is really 1 times 54. So always start with 1 because teachers do that. I don't, but some teachers do. Third step, break up last term, starting with 1. 4. Find combo for middle term. What have I not mentioned? What have I not mentioned this whole time? I've gone through three, four steps, and what have I not mentioned? Signs. The signs. Because once you get one through four, the signs will fall into place. But then what y'all do, students do, is they worry about what first? The signs. And they can't think because they have to worry about the signs. Don't do that. Five. Look at sign of middle term. And remember, the sign of the middle term, the sign of the greater number, of the bigger number, carries. Sign of biggest number carries. And you'll see when I do an example. Sign of the biggest number carries. That's supposed to be an at symbol. Six. Look at sign of the last term. Like is positive. Unlike is what? Negative. And you got to remember that from the FOIL method. So there's our, I mean, let's do an example. Let's do um, x squared, i got to think up one, uh, minus 
5x minus 36. Take a minute to work on that. I tried to turn on the air in here. I guess I got hot from field day or whatever. Break up, two sets of parentheses. Now x is easy to do because what's the coefficient of x? One. So that's one x here and one x there. So that's not a big deal. 36, I break it up. Hold on just a second. Let me move this over. I need some room. Break up 36, 1 and 36, 2 and 18, 3 and 12, 4 and 9. And then I go to 5, 6, 6 and 6, and 7, 8, 9, goes back, wraps around. So now I'm going to start with 1 and 24, or 1 and 36. What will 1 and 36 give us if I combine them? 37 and 30 what? 5, right? 37 and 35. Is that a 37 or a 35? Nope. What will 2 and 18 give us if we combine them? 20 and what? 16. That ain't going to help us. 6 and 6 will give us 0 or what? 0 or 12. That ain't going to help us. 3 and 12 will give us a 15 and a what? A 9? Yeah. That ain't going to help us. 9 and 4 will give us a 13 or a what? Why? 4 and 9. A lot of people say, why do you put the 4 first? Which way we read? Left to right. You've been reading left to right for the last how many years? 29. Let's just say 29 years. That's how old y'all learn to get. You'll get 29 and you'll quit counting. So we'll just say 29. All right? I love it when y'all put the 9 first. Why? Anyway, so now we've got X and 4 and X and 9. Now technically, you've got the problem correct. There's no way to screw this up except for what? The signs. But all you've got to remember is... O-I-L. O-I combined in the last. So look at the sign of the middle term. So that means the biggest number has to carry the negative. So which one's that? Nine. What does this mean? To get a negative 36, I've got to have like signs or unlike signs? Unlike. So if this is a negative, that's all there is to it. And I guarantee you somebody in here is going, wow, that's easy. Why was it so complicated? Pretty much. X plus 4. Or you didn't listen one of the two. What? No, I listened. She said, <laughs> There it is. Yeah. All right, so let's do a nerd. Let's do, 
We'll do uh, another easy one, and then we're going to do one that's a little bit more complicated. X squared plus 10x I've got to let me think a minute. Minus 24. I think that'll work. Let's put this one on. People go, well, there's no way two times, uh, there's no way three times eight will give you ten. Or three plus eight will give you ten. And they sit there and stare at it. Three plus eight. Three, three and eight. Three and eight. Three and eight. Well, six and four will give you ten, but that won't work. And they sit there and they try three and eight and six and four. And they try three and eight and six and four for 30 minutes. And then they give up on the problem and go to the next problem. Because they had not started with one. Push is fall. My egg is cold. My bacon is cold. And my cheese. I'm sorry. You want part of my bacon, egg, and cheese biscuit? <laughs> no, I'm it's cold. <laughs> Actually, it's not bad. It's got that home cooked taste. I get to cook my son breakfast. And by the time he gets through, he's like, uh. But I can get up at 6:45 and bake my and and get dressed, get him dressed, and I can cook eggs, bacon, grits, yeah, and have him at school by eight o'clock. So I'm mean, pretty good for a bachelor. Mm -hmm. Mine has to be at school 7:40. Well, the reason I get mine there at 8 o'clock is I just don't want them sitting in the hallway for 30 minutes. Because, to me, that is not productive. I mean, it's social, and that's fine, but they get that during the day. They don't need, I just don't. Sit on the cold floor? Yeah, I don't, I don't like that, because I couldn't stand when I was at Southwood. We'd get there like at 7.20, 7.30, or whatever, and we'd have to sit in that cafeteria for 30, 45 minutes, or whatever time, and it just, I just didn't like it. Me. Some people love it. I do. X, X, and I'm going to break up 1, 24, 2, 12, 3, 8, 4, 6. Okay, 1 and 24, give me a 25 and a 23. That won't help us. 2 and 12, give us a 14 or what? 10. Oh my! Let's try that. So I'm going to put a 2 here and a 12 here. What does this sign tell us? That the biggest number has to be what? Positive. And this tells us like or unlike? Unlike. It's a miracle. Now, the closest thing to playing a musical instrument in mathematics is this right here. Okay, anybody in here plays a musical instrument knows you don't just do it on a musical instrument and start playing Beethoven's Fifth. It doesn't happen that way. Unless you're gifted and talented. And if you're gifted and talented, you don't need to be a track and tech. Okay, you need to be at Yale or Cambridge or somewhere like that. All right? And you would have been discovered a whole lot a whole, a whole lot a long time ago if you were gifted and talented. So for those of you that are normal and semi-normal like me, it takes you a lot of practice to learn how to play a piano or a guitar or a percussion instrument or whatever. All right? This, from here to here, takes 50, 100,000 problems for you to develop it. All right? But I guarantee you, this has been shown to you today, the easiest that it's been shown to you, 
before. I'm confident in that because this is the way that I learned it. Not from a teacher. This is the way that I did it. And I've been teaching it ever since. And it works. And if you follow those... Now, where is the monkey wrench? Well, I'll show you where the monkey wrench is. When you have something besides a 1 in front of the x squared. And you did the same thing. Let's go with... I'll have to look one up because Here. I can't... You got one? Good job. Uh -huh. I don't know if that one's prime or not. I'll try. 7x squared plus 17x plus 6 is equal to blank. All right, our factor. So, the things break up this, 1 and 7. Now, that's pretty much, that, that's it, because it's a prime number. So, now again, why did I put the one first? Because that's the way I read, from one, left to right. Now you're going to be prohibited on what you can put next because of the 17. Right? If yeah, this is factorable. So, 1 and 6, 2 and 3. Now, what you have to do is you're going to have to put a 1 and a 6 right here, a 1 and a 6 right here, and do your outside and inside. Because what will 1 times 6 always give you? Six. What will 2 times 3 always give you? Six. So the trick to doing these problems when A is not equal to 1 is the trick is to find the what? The outside and inside. That's the trick. You don't have to worry about the last because the last will take care of itself. So, 6x and 7x. What will 6x and 7x give you? Give you a 1x or it'll give you a what? 13x, Hubert. That's right, class. 6 plus 7, 13. Uh, mm. uh, I thought you were multiplying. No. Yeah. Outside and inside, what do you do? Combine. You combine. So, 6x and 7x will give you a 1x, or it will give you a what? 13x. 13x. So we don't need 6 and 1. So flip it. Put a 6 here and a 1 here. Now usually what this will do when you flip it is give you a BA number that you can't work with. And where is the BA number? 42. 42 and 1. What will 42 and 1 give you? So 40 or 43. So 6 and 1 is what? Half. You ever heard of process of elimination? Mm -hmm. Well, this is how, this is the, there ain't no secret way to do when A is equal, but greater than 1. It's just trial and error. But you've got to be consistent. You've got to have a consistent methodology. You've got to have something that's methodical that you can do every single time. Because a lot of mathematics is pattern. A lot of mathematics is doing things consistently the same way. Okay? So, I think we should just quit because it's getting too difficult. Two and three, right? So put a two here. <coughs> Y'all are supposed to say, yeah, let's quit. Uh -huh. Two and three. What's two times seven? Fourteen. And what's fourteen and three X? 17x. Yeah. It's a miracle. But you got to put it exactly like that. Because if you put a 3 here, you're going to get 21 and 2, and 21 and 2 is not going to give you 17. So if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So don't change it. Put a 2 here, and a 3 here. And that will give you your 3 and 14. What does this sign tell you? The biggest number has to be positive. positive. Which one's bigger, 14 or 3? 14. Well, you can't put a positive right here, so you've got to put it right there. And what does this tell you? Like or unlike? Like. And you're done. So your answer is x plus 2. And 7x plus 3. 
and you feel good about yourself. All right, who's got another one? Anybody pull up another one on homework? I'll pull up one in just a second. And then we'll get to other types of factoring besides trinomials. This one is the one you need to spend a lot of time on because you're going to see this <laughs> till you get finished with calculus. If you're one of those students that's going to go sciences, maths, you're going to see this over and over and over, so you might as well get used to it. Let's take our handy-dandy whiteboard. Let's don't do that. I don't know what I'm doing. Let's see. I think I need to quit. What section of homework was 5. that? 5.6. 5.6? What number? What's number two? Two. The second problem? Yeah. Okay. So that's that one. I guess this one. Nope. Oh, I know why. That's You did homework. This is study plan. It's different. Um, I'll find it. It's probably that one right there. All right. Let's do a nerd. Well, they only give you two trinomials. All right, do that one. 7x squared plus 9x plus 2. I'll blow it up for you. And if you can't do it, just consider yourself a failure. We'll fill out a drop slip for you. Go ahead and quit. Trying to discourage you as much as possible. Good. <laughs> oh, I wish it was raining. Uh -huh. We don't want to have to go home and cut hay down and go home and drain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I like rainy days. That's why. An excuse to watch movies? Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, I'm surprised you didn't ask me my favorite actress. Who? Sandra Bullock. Montana. Male. Yeah, I'm going to be caveman. I'm sorry. Male. Oh. Male? Oh, gosh. Oh, uh, Tommy Lee Jones. Um, um, Sean Connery, of course. I like Al Pacino. Who? Al Pacino. Oh, yeah. Al Pacino. Anything <laughs> Al Pacino in is great. Uh, so is uh, Robert De Niro, uh, Robert Duvall. Uh, Morgan Freeman, Samuel Jackson. Dan, uh, Samuel Jackson, yes. I like Samuel Jackson more than Fishburne. I don't like Fishburne. I didn't like him in Matrix. He's, I, uh, he acted all stupid in Matrix. I didn't like him in Matrix. And uh, Denzel Washington. Mm -hmm. So I got a lot of them. But my actress? <laughs> Hands down. <laughs> oh, but listen, she had, did you see the article in People? Mm. Oh, man, they made her look like a slut in People magazine. <laughs> You ought to see the pictures. They took pictures of her. Oh, that made her look. I don't know if she wanted it that way or not, but it took away from her. Because she didn't. She doesn't fit. She don't, she don't fit that mold. Uh-uh. But they've got a whole write-up of Sandra Bullock on People, on People Magazine about it. Oh, God. So I actually read it. I don't read very much. They didn't ask her no juicy stuff. They just asked her, what is love? What is beauty? You know, it's like, I thought they were going to ask her some good stuff. Um, yeah, that's it. I don't I have another one. Who's your favorite actor and actress? Sandra Bolt's mine. Is it? Um, how about like you on the actor side? Oh, God. There's a lot of them. In fact, I gauge movies by who's playing them. Uh -huh. If you get some dork, I won't watch it. But if Tommy Lee Jones is in it, I'm going to watch it. Or if Morgan Freeman is in it, even though I don't care much about the politics, I'll watch it. Yeah. Russell Crowe. I like Russell Crowe. I think he's kind of out there, but I'll, I love Gladiator. I watch Gladiator. Me and my son watch Gladiator 5,000 times. Do you watch the Avenger movies? Who? Avengers. 
Yeah, Marvel. but I, I, got, I got two complaints about the Avenger movies. I love Iron Man because I like, what's his name, Robert? Is it Robert Downey? Robert Downey Jr. Yeah, yeah I love Robert Downey Jr. And I like Hulk. I like the, the sarcasm in the Hulk. And he knocks Thor out of the picture. and I think that's funny. I like Thor. I don't understand the rest of them. I hate Captain Avenger. I think somebody should give him a girlfriend. He needs a girlfriend. Captain America? Yeah, whatever his name is. He needs a girlfriend. Bad. And he needs to get drunk. And the other two, what the hell are they there for? Who, Black Widow and... Yeah. I mean, they're just people that can get shot and get killed. What are they there for? And the guy with the bow and arrow. Who is that? That's Hawkeye. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I hope your uncle is with me on this. That's the only reason why. That's I don't two. understand those two. Uh, I don't either. Oh. And I think they should take the two, the girl and the guy out and leave. I, I could take the thing. I think, they put, I think they put Black Widow in there just for the sexism. Well, they need to get Black Widow, the, the Captain Avenger, they need to get them too drunk or something. <laughs> Captain Avenger needs a girlfriend bad or Captain America. <laughs> He get the last movie, the movie at Nitron or Ultron. I, I, I was fixing to get up and walk out because he was like, "No, we don't need to do that. We need. We didn't have a meeting. Shut up." <laughs> I hope it's all the one yet. He is Mister Right Down the Middle. Yes, I'm being bad. I, I'm not a comic book. I'm not either, but. But Somebody got my five-year-old hooked on them in now. I do like I do like Hulk and Iron Man. Oh, and I like Transformers. Hulk. Transformers, I don't like the the wussy guy. That, I don't like the guy that I don't like it. I don't like. It. <laughs> <laughs> I like Bumblebee. I like that. Character. Yeah, I like, I like Bumblebee, Bumblebee, but I don't like the guy that play, that rides in Bumblebee. He's a who is that guy? It was Shia LaBeouf, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, but he. What did he play on to begin with? It was like nothing. He played on the TV sitcom. Oh, uh, well, that's why I don't watch TV. Series. It was, um, he played the little misfit boy in the show, too. Uh, so. I don't, I don't watch much TV except for movies. What's your favorite movie? Oh, gosh. Going to Win. Uh -huh. Going to Win, my favorite. Uh, -huh. uh, oh, gosh. I've got them all. Oh, God, I love the uh, Yaw Yaw Sisterhood. I love that movie. Still Magnolias. I love that movie. I love green fried tomatoes. You can tell you're raised here. Uh, <laughs> you can I love you're fried green here. tomatoes because I love that woman that, that took the car and ran it into the sports car five or six times mm -hmm. in the parking lot. What's her name? Kathy Bates. Now, she is a good actor, actress. Kathy Bates. I like Julie Roberts, too, speaking of those I old movies. Like Julie Roberts. Never have. Never have. Wow. Never thought she was all that. I, didn't, I don't think she's all that. But, but why all these other people do, I don't know. Just save the bullet a lot better looking. Save X squared plus 9X plus 2.